Hey guys, welcome back! Back in the 80s and early 90s, conversions from arcade games to home computers and consoles was a common practice. I was always waiting for that big arcade blockbuster to be ported to my ZX Spectrum, to my Amiga, to my Mega Drive or even to my good old IBM PS1. But for now, let's focus exclusively on Commodore's machine and point out the games that I believe to be the best Arcade 2 Amiga ports ever made. Let's take a look. R-Type When R-Type arrived at the arcades, it was an instant success. Everyone wanted to have a slice of it and later being able to play it at home was something that I was really looking forward to. This conversion by Factor 5 and Rainbow Arts retains many of the original features, so once again, a huge battle is being fought in our space and our job is to save the universe from these strange looking creatures. Shooting them, valuable weapons and upgrades can be collected and probably the most important is the weapon spot that functions as a sort of force field that can be attached to our craft. If you've played the arcade original, you know that the 8 levels of combat present provide different arenas of frenetic gameplay and excitement, being at the same time challenging and difficult enough to keep us glued to it. Witnessing all the success and hype around R-Type, Irem would obviously start working on a sequel that eventually arrived a couple of years later. The conversion of R-Type 2 to the Amiga came from the hands of Arc Developments and what a conversion it was! It offered extremely accurate graphics and sound that truly captures the excellent feel of the original coin-op game. R-Type 2 brings extra weaponry in relation to its older brother and as well some graphical touches and increased difficulty. And that's really the only downside to it, the extremely tough gameplay that can be frustrating at times. Even so, this is an impressive conversion of a challenging and addictive blast of a game. Chase HQ. Chasing down bad guys and ramming their beautiful sports cars off the road was something quite unique. So Ocean Software, the masters in arcade and movie conversions, immediately grabbed the license to bring Chase HQ to home computers. With its Miami Vice feeling and look, the phrase Let's go, Mr. Driver and even Nancy are equally iconic to all that played the original arcade game. As said, as we set foot into our black Porsche 928, we simply have to tear along the freeway until the suspect, described earlier by Nancy, is sighted. Once visual contact is made, the only way to treat these foes is to bash into their cars several times to force them to pull over, then we're invited to make the arrest. Five criminals are on the move and we have limited time to do it successfully, cause as usual, we must pay attention to other drivers and avoid also roadside obstacles. This will slow us down tremendously, so pay extra attention while on pursuit of a crook. Three turbo boosts are also available that must be used wisely. If we miss the right turn at the fork down the road, there's no other way than waste those turbo boosts just to be able to reach the criminal, so my advice is to never miss the right turn. Saint Dragon Saint Dragon was so addictive, both on the arcades and on my ZX Spectrum, but was on the Amiga that I would later further explore it. It really lacks a deeper parallax scrolling effect, but the developer who ported the game just followed the exact same template of the arcade original from Jaleco, and that was a freaking awesome achievement. The game plays and sounds practically identical to the arcade game. Graphics are superbly drawn and colored, evoking the feel of playing the coin-op original. And despite the number of sprites on screen and the sheer size of the enemies, scrolling and animation moves at a pretty smooth pace. 
there isn't much to say about the plot of Saint Dragon. We play a cyborg warrior who has decided to rebel against the evil and oppressive forces of our tyrannical leaders. Like in Robocop, we're part machine, part dragon, so I guess that we have feelings. And another arcade game slightly similar in style to Saint Dragon is Dragon Breed. Again, a truly faithful conversion of a complex coin-op game by Irem. This port was brought by Arc Development, as seen the ones also responsible for the amazing conversion of R-Type 2, and as we can witness, features well animated dragons and a not as good but still pretty solid soundtrack. We play as a prince and his personal dragon, fighting for survival during the course of six levels. Only the rider can be killed, so we must use the dragon's tail to ensure that the prince is safe from enemy fire. A cool feature is that we can leap off the dragon and climb the scenery to collect all sorts of power-ups like magic potions. These potions will provide extra powers to the dragon, changing its color in the process. And collecting the right power-ups to defeat the right enemies becomes a crucial task to our success and survival. Midnight Resistance I absolutely love Midnight Resistance on every single system to where it was ported. My favorite conversion is probably the one for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis, made by Data Hiss themselves, but sadly, it was never released in Europe. Nowadays I can play it using my own made arcade cabinet, but back then, I could only enjoy it on the ZX Spectrum and on the Amiga. And it was awesome to see the arcade cabinet being featured in the second Robocop movie. Ocean Software grabbed the license and special effects was the team responsible for this conversion of such a highly popular coin-op game, at least here in Portugal. And I can't get this amazing soundtrack out of my mind, it's simply one of my favorites of all time. In this one some nasty alien invaders have kidnapped our family. So obviously that our mission is to try and rescue them, going against a huge army of enemies, ranging from foot soldiers through to massive F-14s and huge floating heads that spit maggots. If you're familiar with the arcade original, you know that Midnight Resistance also offers multi-directional scrolling and huge backdrops, ranging from winding mountain trails to massive underground complexes. The two-player option remains intact, with the clever use of joystick control, allowing us to fire in eight directions, regardless of which way we're traveling. Collecting keys dropped by the enemies will allow us to improve our firepower and choosing the right weapon is crucial to advance in the game. It really plays like on an arcade cabinet, with huge and well-animated sprites along with smooth 8-way scrolling. Impressive! Silkworm Silkworm is probably the best example of a game that is better on the Amiga than on its original ground. This explosive action can be experienced by two players simultaneously, one controlling an helicopter and the other a jeep, paired with a freaking huge machine gun. The arcade original is faithfully represented with sharp and smooth graphics, along with tight controls with the most perfect collision detection. There are tons of opponents to destroy, and at the bottom there's an indicator which tells us how many enemies we have already destroyed. When this indicator reaches zero, a bigger enemy will appear and destroying it, power-ups will be dropped for us to collect and continue our mission. Random access and the sales curve were the ones responsible for this incredible port that would offer us a couple of years later the also amazing Swiv, a sort of unofficial sequel to Silkworm. It really must be experienced by two players simultaneously, helping each other out, destroying the vast array of opponents. Sound effects complement the graphics wonderfully and we only need to get halfway into the first level to witness all the chaos and destruction with the screen packed with missiles, planes, tanks and helicopters. Can we survive this?
Cabal. I have so many fond memories of playing Cabal at the arcades and later on my good old ZX Spectrum 128K. Try the Amiga version a couple of years later and I was once again addicted to it. In Cabal we're behind enemy lines and have to fight through 5 levels, each with 4 stages in order to stay alive and reach safe ground. A friend can join in and the general idea is to move our character from left to right shooting at all the enemy soldiers that comes running on from the sides of the screen. Pressing the fire button we're able to shoot and move around that giant site. Releasing the fire button will allow us to move the character from one place to another, running or rolling along the ground. As you've noticed, also bigger things need to be destroyed, like tanks, helicopters and trucks. Use grenades to take down these tougher opponents, but be aware that our supply is really limited. For last, one of the most satisfying thing on Cabal is the ability to also reduce those buildings to bits and pieces. So much fun and an amazing port by again Ocean Software. Rodland. Another astonishing port by the sales curve from an arcade original. Rodland let us play with the fairies Rit and Tam on a quest to rescue their mother. They're armed with their magical wand that we must use against the enemy. Instead of jumping, we can magically place ladders anywhere and doing so avoid being captured. 44 levels awaits the player and everything's done with a cartoonish sense of exaggeration. Bombs explode in a huge multicolored flash with boom in the middle. Enemies are killed by impaling them on the end of the magic rod and smashing them from side to side on the ground with extreme violence. Such a cute game. Rodland looks gorgeous, sounds gorgeous, plays like a dream even being kind of repetitive. But it's what this game is all about. It simply doesn't care about being repetitive or with no depth at all. It's fun, that's what really matters and I must finish by saying that it's one of the most accurate and perfect arcade-like experiences on the Amiga. Rainbow Islands And staying in the Cutem Up land, Rainbow Islands is another fine example of a masterful arcade conversion for the Amiga. It's the sequel to Bubble Bobble, so Bub and Bob are back but this time around in their human form and armed with rainbows instead of bubbles. And that's not all! The levels now scroll vertically and not horizontally like most platformers. We have to run and jump vertically to avoid being swallowed by the water rising from below. Each island has a different theme, but they are all bright and colorful with a host of cute creatures with the one and only goal of killing the main characters. Like in Bubble Bobble, when an enemy die, it leaves behind some fruity bonuses, diamonds and even power-ups and when we reach the end of each island, an end level boss is patiently waiting for us. Toki. The port of Toki to the Amiga was made by Ocean France. It's a highly impressive one and really hard to ignore. As I've mentioned many times before, we control this heroic primate as he makes his way through the various levels to rescue Princess Maiho from the claws of an evil wizard that is also the one responsible for our own appearance. Toki's main weapon are fireballs that he spits at the numerous enemies, but jumping onto the enemies' heads is another highly rewarding move to perform. It's not an easy game, so gladly various power-ups can be found and collected, like the football helmet for extra protection. It's a beautiful platformer packed with tons of action, huge bosses and incredible music that, as said, can't simply be ignored. Pang. And what about Pang? Another masterful conversion by Ocean France. 
Both the sprites and backgrounds have been superbly designed, using full color to capture the bright and cheerful appearance of the original game from Mitchell Corporation. Even when the screen is packed with balloons and creatures, the action is still swift and smooth as silk. As for sound and music, these are truly faithful to the arcade coin-op game. It's one of those titles that we just want to have a go again and again. In Pang we embark on this journey through 18 different locations shooting balloons as we go. A number of rounds is played at each of the locations at various times in the day. The balloons, being balloons, bounce around screens scattered with platforms and ladders, so our mission is to simply burst the balloons destroying them completely, because these locations and their important landmarks are in danger if we don't do so. Shields and additional weapons will gradually become available to make the going a little easier, such as the Vulcan gun and the double harpoons. However, colliding with any of the various creatures that wander around disables the weapons for a short while. There's also a time limit to pop all those balloons, so better make it fast! And because there are so many other great Arcade 2 Amiga ports, here's a few honorable mentions. So guys, these were indeed incredible ports that Amiga users like myself truly appreciated back in the day. Around the city I lived in, there were so many incredible places packed with the latest arcade games and that's why I keep telling you that the arcade experience was the spark that fueled my passion for gaming in the first place. Ocean Software were the masters on bringing the arcade experience home, but we must not forget all other developers and publishers that also add a slice of that gold mine. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you did, please tell me if you want to see this same subject applied to the ZX Spectrum, PC and the Mega Drive. These were the platforms I owned back in the golden age of arcade gaming, so I'm open to suggestions. In the meanwhile, please like, share, comment, subscribe and click on that bell icon so that you're notified when all my future content becomes available. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in my next video. Cheers!